you know, on our side. So we have to make sure we get as many of them as possible. And that's our mission. And our next big push now is going to be to put an Oath Keeper packet, including an Oath Keeper's guidebook and a, and a tab they can put on their uniform. We want to get those out to every single service member. So we're going to be doing a big money way between now and, and November 11th, which is the Veterans Day. And it's going to go into a distinct fund where people can just donate 30 bucks, and it will go right to in the hands of a service member, current serving. They'll know that every time they do that, it's going to, it's going to end that result. And, and it's, really oath, the best it's oath-keepers.blogspot.com. No, we have a new website, oathkeepers.org. Oathkeepers.org. We'll also get you that up. It. I want to go to some phone calls, Stuart, in the time we have left sure. with you. But I did want to mention the Joker posters. Uh, these were put up in California. Then Mark Dice had his own contest, so I copied him, did a contest. But a few people put these on post office boxes, big deal. But they're saying, oh, big federal felony terrorism. Now they're saying it's an act of terror and abusive, and there's victims. If you even put it up where other posters are, they're saying the poster itself is racist, that it's a hate crime to say socialism. I'm not kidding. That's in the news. And they right. have people on the news saying, I need to be arrested. That's, that's, uh, that's content-based that's content discrimination. That's content-based targeting. Like you just said, they're targeting the content. They're not, it, it's, not, it's not content neutral. That's unconstitutional. Yeah, because you're, I mean, you're a constitutional lawyer. I was going to ask your opinion. So, so, I mean, that's the, so, so clearly this is discrimination then. Oh, sure. Even at the ACLU, they'll tell you the same thing, I hope, is that it's, it's clearly content-based. I mean, are they doing the same thing, the same thing to everybody else with the flyer? No, they're not. So it's good based on your content. That's unconstitutional. I don't care what you're saying. You could have if you could have the, the, the Klan putting up a, a swastika, and if they are singled out because of the content, that's also content-based discrimination. That's why the ACLU defended the Klan's right to march through Skokie, Illinois. Through you know, it, it, as painful and horrible as that was, it was to protect the, the, the principle that you don't discriminate on content. Because the minute that the Klan. Every one of them federal officers. I've been to these events to protest them. I mean, it's just feds, period. And it's come out over and over again. It's feds to demonize the patriot movement. Because they'll get up there and give pro-Second Amendment speeches. They'll get up there and give anti-New World Order speeches. All to demonize us. And later it comes out they're feds or informants or, you know, the leaders are, are, are being paid to do it. But, yeah, you take those big, fat federal agents right away, you lose your right. And that's why these people sending me emails saying I deserve to go to prison, that just shows they haven't been teaching civics in the schools. No, they don't, they don't understand their own history. I mean, the civil rights movement in the 60s would have gone nowhere if you could have content-based discrimination. That's why, they, that's why they resorted to peaceful marches, because they have a constitutional right. The First Amendment, sadly, um, the, other, the other parts of the Bill of Rights aren't as strongly protected, but the First Amendment has been pretty strongly protected. It's the most potent weapon we have legally, as far as it, it's uh, the level of protection for it. And you can thank the ACLU for that. They get some things right. Well, Stuart, so, let me ask you this. You were talking to the military. You're talking to the police. Tens of thousands have contacted you. You have huge events. It's exploding. Yeah. What is their view on seeing all this classic, really Maoist, is, is the closest thing I would call it, tyranny manifesting? Uh, are they redoubling their efforts to warn other military and police? I mean, clearly... If the government uh, organs and, 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 and government surrogates like Southern Poverty Law are coming after you, they are. Uh, but, I mean, what's the yeah. sense of the membership? Yeah, the, the, it's making them all the more resolved. And, like you said earlier, it makes it clear that we are in the game now that we all had dreaded would, would be coming. It's happening to us right now. And so we are hearing back, active duty, if I could get an active duty guy right now up on our blog, um, our site, who are saying, I am making sure I spread this as far and as fast as possible. We want to help them. We want to put billboards up outside of outside of bases. We want to make sure we get a care package. My goal is to have a care package in the hands of 40,000 active duty troops by Christmas. So that's my goal. And we're starting uh, state networks, too. We now have state chapters with state directors, and our goal is to have an active Oath Keeper chapter in every county of the state to make sure the sheriff is squared away, make sure the police there know who the veterans are, they all become friends, they all know who they have each other's back. That's our goal, is to make sure that we've got our county squared away from the bottom up. And so working as fast as we possibly can. Oh, and Sheriff Mack, in fact, speaking of sheriffs, has a, a response to Southern Poverty Law Center that he just sent me. We just posted it on our site. So if folks want to go to oathkeepers.org, they can read his well-reasoned response. And also, with Lieutenant Commander Gilly, who's an active duty naval commander, who was with us at Lexington, is writing his response. We'll post that as soon as he sends it in. Well, 
good because if we give in to this chilling effect, in fact, next Wednesday I'll announce the winners to the great Obama boast, uh, poster contest. But I'm going to go ahead and next week announce another contest to keep this going. Regardless, all of you that put posters up won. Be sure and follow your local laws. Don't give these thugs excuses to selectively enforce on you. But because they're trying to threaten me, because they're telling me I don't have a First Amendment, but Obama can be in the Washington Post say, saying, put my posters up on stop signs. He's saying do something illegal. We're not. But they're saying we're not even though allowed to legally say this. I'm not giving in to this intimidation. They're, no, don't. No. And you they're don't coming. You call. <laughs> well, thank you, Stuart. I want your take on this in a moment. I just wanted to tell the people. If we give in to the intimidation, they win. They wouldn't be going absolutely crazy over this, though, if it wasn't scaring them. And just the exercise of people out putting things up, just the exercise of getting off your butts, is is a literal uh, psychological and spiritual shift. Stuart comments. Well, it's like the movie V for Vendetta. You know, after a while, everyone was running around spray painting bees. Um, and whether the state decrees it okay or not, you should exercise your First Amendment right. I got an idea for you. How about one that says Oathbreaker? <laughs> below is below the picture. That's a good idea, Oathbreaker or liar. I mean, he's yeah. been caught lying about everything he said he'd do. Liar. No, but, the, but the response should be to go out there and do it more. That should be the response. Well, that's what the listeners are doing. I said listeners. I said be careful. And the listeners are going, no. And they're doing it to police stations. So the spirit of 1776 is alive and well. And I would caution the police and military to think twice about what side of history they want to be on. Your gut tells you to join us.